So this is the original Prusa Mark IV S. And you've seen the intro, not a lot has changed versus the Mark IV, which I've got right here. Uh, you've actually seen most of the changes already. And I think because of that, this is a very interesting product launch, not because of the product itself, but because of the, the context and because of how it was launched. So what has actually changed versus the Mark IV? Well, the first one you've already seen, and that is the big new part cooling fan. This is a much bigger unit than the small slim fan on the Mark IV. Um, so this can push a lot more air if it needs to. In typical use, it's about the same noise level. It's also got a new fan shroud that wraps around the nozzle a lot better. So it can cool your prints a lot more effectively. And that is needed because the other change that is pretty much invisible is that it now comes with a Bontex CHT style next to the nozzle. So with the Mark IV, the Excel, um, and now the Mark IV-S, you can of course use standard V6 nozzles with the adapter. Um, you can just plop in a standard CHT nozzle and use that as a high flow option. But now they're available as a first party quick swap nozzle. This one comes with a 0.4 by default out of the box. Uh, you can get the 0.6 and of course you can use still all the other nozzles. But of course having a high flow nozzle means that now there is more headroom in extrusion rate with the entire machine. And the way that Prusa are using that increased headroom is not by moving the nozzle faster by increasing the, the feed rates on X and Y, but by actually giving you profiles that now print at a larger layer height. So I've, I've done a bunch of test parts, both in PLA and in PDG, and then some overhang tests just to see how much that extra flow rate impacts the prints and how usable those new profiles are. The Mark IV topped out at the 0.2 millimeter speed profile, and that's four hours, 13 minutes for this part. The fastest that the uh, Mark IV S can do is this one, which is 0.28 millimeters. That's called the draft profile. And this one takes three hours. So between the fastest that the Mark IV could do and the Mark IV S can do, there's about a 25% increase, well, a bit more than 25% actually, um, with prints that are still very much usable. I've asked for something like this with the Excel, where it was like, okay, you've got the, the speed benchy tuned for this printer and you can do it incredibly fast, but you're not allowing users to make use of that speed. Now there is at least a profile that is usable and still pushing things a bit further than, you know, what you would typically use. Well, this is the fast one. You can tell that it is at the edge of the printer's performance. All the parts are completely matte. And in fact, if you look at uh, the PTG prints, yeah, this one, there's some really textured matte surfaces in there with the draft profile. You know, it still prints okay, the part is still very much usable, but with the draft profile, I wouldn't necessarily use it for structural or cosmetic parts, maybe for jigs or for prototypes where you just need to see how well parts fit. But there are also, you know, 0.25 millimeter structural and speed profiles now um, that the Mark IV didn't have. So that increases the flow rate, of course, of the nozzle just a bit. The linear print speed, again, stays pretty much the same. So you get about a 15 to 20% overall print time gain by using those new profiles. Well, you know, not really losing a whole lot in print quality. You can see the coarser layers, but these are very much still dimensionally very accurate and aesthetically, I think, consistent and pleasing to look at. There's no artifacts from corner ringing or uh, input shaping, corner rounding or that sort of stuff. These are still very much tuned for dimensional and usable parts. So if you want sort of a, an absolute time comparison um, for how fast the Mark IV S hand print if it needs to, there is a 14 minute speedboat race compliant Benchy pre-slice for this machine. And it actually looks really good, but it's not something that the stock slicer profiles will do for you. But of course you can push it, you can tune it. It's not a profile that is gonna be universal for everything as is every other speedboat race profile. And lastly, for these print profiles, I did print these uh, Benchy Benchy Benchies. These are just the bows where parts will typically curl if they are printed either too hot or with insufficient cooling. And between the Mark IV at its maximum speed profile and the Mark IV S at its fastest profiles, all these Benchy bows printed with zero curling. So the profiles that they tuned for the Mark IV S in combination with the new fan and the high flow nozzle, those profiles are very much tuned to be sort of universal and not situational. Maybe, you know, the draft one, that is one that very much is a draft profile, but all the other ones, totally universally usable profiles. And that's something that uh, Prusa have always prioritized versus just pushing things to the limit. Now with these higher flow rates and the more intense part cooling, some of these parts in the draft profiles, especially print matte and 
what that means for your part strength is something that actually has a lot more implications and a lot more details. And that's something that I can explore further if you guys are interested in. Some of the other less apparent changes with the Mark IV-S are in the electronics compartment department. So the board is the exact same as in the Mark IV. There's nothing changed about that. So it uses the same drivers, the same electronics, same CPU. All of that is exactly the same but there is now a new port in the back for expansion that you're gonna be able to plug in a GPIO expander for like inputs and outputs. So it has a camera trigger, so you can do those smooth time lapses. It also has just a bunch of simple digital input outputs that I guess you can attach stuff like lights to. You could even have the printer trigger like a cycle on a robot arm where it reaches in and grabs a print, something like that. That's now officially supported. There's also now official support for accelerometer tuning for input shaping. So that port has always been on the main board, but now the software is there for it. And I guess they're gonna have a accelerometer board that you attach to the tool head. If you change the weight or the design of that, you can retune that and then retune the bed if you want that too. But that's also not something I have at this point. The other change with the electronics is that it now has an active NFC area on the side. So in combination with the Prusa app that's coming out, that will allow you to remote control the printer very easily to hook it into the app and to do the Wi-Fi setup, which so far has been a huge pain, you know, USB drive, text file, all that, that's gone. So either you can configure Wi-Fi through the app or through the screen. Uh, the way they've implemented that is, I think, hilarious. They've got a keypad input for text, which, you know, for inputting a Wi-Fi password, works really well on, this, on the small screen. But, you know, if you're younger than 30, this might actually be the first time that you're having to input text with a keypad like that. I got the hang of it. It works really well, like I said, but it's it's just, it's interesting. It's it's one of those Prusa solutions, right? There are a couple more low profile changes on the printer. You know, the ZNs are now black. The hot end now has a sock by default. The display now has a injection molded cover, which I'm not a fan of, it, it just reminds me too much of the Ender 3 V2, which was just a, a really cheap machine. It worked kind of well, but you know, it, it looks like a much more low-end printer to me now. The screen itself though, that is actually a nicer, a noticeably nicer panel than the Mark IV. More brightness, better colors, better contrast. That's also undocumented, and that might be something that has just been introduced over the lifetime of a Mark IV, and is now, you know, carried over into the Mark IVs. I don't know. Now, as the upside of this being a rather minimal hardware upgrade versus the Mark IV, it means if you want to upgrade a Mark IV to a Mark IVs, they're offering the entire upgrade kit for a hundred bucks. So you can add all the stuff that's new with a Mark IVs to a Mark IV for a hundred bucks. I think that's fair for like a 20, 30% print speed upgrade. On the other hand, many of the changes that the Mark IVs has versus when I first looked at the Mark IV and when everyone else was looking at the Mark IV, sort of fell under the radar because, you know, when the Mark IV first released, it was a somewhat incomplete machine. Then it got software upgrades. You know, there's some incremental stuff, like I think the screen just happened to get upgraded at some point. And now it's the Mark IVs and the only big two features are the fan and the nozzle. And I think all the other stuff that's been added to the machine incrementally has a much bigger impact than those two things. So input shaping, pressure advance, that's something that was added to the Mark IV after release. So the initial reviews didn't have that, and then it got it anyway. And that's leaving out things uh, like software upgrades in the slicer with Prusa Slicer, or uh, firmware upgrades on the machine that just make the machine more usable. Prusa Connect, of course, also got new features and got better integrated into Prusa Slicer. That's not really being sold as a feature of the Mark IVs. It just happens at a random time, and then it's there for all the machines. And the point that I realized that sort of releasing features strategically is something that is very important in how people perceive your new product is with this guy. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. For the entire time that I've owned this watch, it really didn't get any feature upgrades. And it's only now that the Watch 7 is out that they are releasing those features that they've been working on. But of course, since it coincides with a new product launch, they can say, hey, the Watch 7 now does this and it does that. And it's got all these upgrades that the previous watch didn't do. But what they're not saying is that, of course, they don't want to upset the you know, existing owners. So the old watches are getting most of those features as well. And now this thing does a couple of new things that I actually use. So because Prusa are releasing software features to all the machines just when they're ready and are not waiting strategically for a new hardware release to happen, 
this is much smaller of a product launch than it could have been. You know, the Mark IV S, I think they could have introduced these changes just to a running production and been like, yeah, the, the Mark IV now gets a new fan. This really is Prusa saying, hey, we've significantly changed the Mark IV series at this point. It's time to reevaluate it. And we, we sort of want to make a cut and say, okay, this is the old Mark IV. And this is the state of the Mark IV series now. Like I said, this isn't a massive product launch. This is essentially just the 2025 Mark IV, if you want to call it that. But what the Prusa machines still struggle with, you know, the Mark IV series, the Excel, the Mini, is desirability. They don't have any standout features except for like, yeah, the profiles are really good and it just does the thing. Like you unbox it, you, you run through the wizard and you're printing in 10 minutes. That truly is something that works on these. They don't have a wow factor. You know, something like the Magneto goes incredibly fast. Like it's crazy how fast that thing moves, but it's not reliable. It prints oval holes and the profiles it comes with are barely usable. But it's got that standout feature, you know, it's the hot goth girlfriend. This is sort of the... <laughs> this is not that. They're doing lame things like making this thing in the EU and now in the US locally as well. Uh, they're publishing sustainability reports on the stuff they source for the machine. Much of the software and, and stuff is open source. You don't have to connect it to cloud services. Like, you know, things that aren't exciting, really. So this is sort of the mature version of 3D printers. Like it's, there's nothing that's really super hot and exciting about it. But you know, once you've gone through the cycles of tinkering on your printers and tweaking them and tuning them, eventually you just want to use them, right? You, you just want something that works and that does the thing that you bought it for. And that's what this is. It now prints a lot faster than the Mark IV. It's the same price. You can push it further if you want to, if you just really want something that is a quick and dirty print. You can still get this as a kit, as a full-blown, you know, DIY kit, saves you some money. And you also get an insight of how these machines work, which is interesting if you've never done it before. So overall, I think the Mark IV S, while not the most exciting machine and definitely did not the best launch machine ever, it does the thing you want it to do. And that sort of is the theme with Prusa machines. And now for two tips about online security brought to you by today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN isn't just a VPN service anymore. They've actually expanded into a full-on online security system. Tip number one, block everything unnecessary when browsing. And that's not just ads, but every single website now has so many trackers that constantly try to extract as much information about you, your device, and your browsing patterns. NordVPN's Threat Protection Pro blocks malvertising and can also warn you about phishing attempts and malware that's trying to make its way onto your systems. Tip number two, passwords. Use complex ones and never reuse them. Getting a password manager like NordPass with NordVPN makes it easy to create, use, and manage secure passwords everywhere. And if any of your passwords are ever compromised and found floating around on dubious forums, the NordVPN Dark Web Monitor lets you know that it's time to change them. NordVPN, of course, also has a VPN that wraps your entire internet traffic into an extra encryption blanket to make sure it stays private and untampered with wherever you go. And what I find really cool is their MeshNet software, which lets you create a private shared network link across your own and your friends' networks, which is fantastic for working on projects together or setting up LAN parties, like literally a LAN link, but through the internet. If you want to try any of this out, check out nordvpn.com slash made with layers. Some of the stuff I mentioned is actually completely free, but if you do decide to get a VPN plan, first of all, you'll get a special offer and four months extra at the link, but you can also try them risk-free with their 30-day money back guarantee. So thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. So that's my look at the new Prusa Mark IV S. Maybe they should just release a new one every year, bundle everything that they've been working on into one big product release and just be like, yeah, this is, this is all new and then still give it to the existing customers because that's the proper thing to do. I don't know, let me know in the comments below what do you think? Thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel uh, on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. You guys make all this stuff possible. Thank you all for watching. Keep on making and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.